truck was being chased by chips, I think, uh, on a freeway. And I don't know what freeway. We don't really know a lot. We're going to learn about things together today. If you're not interested in car chases, it's time to go away because we're going to do this one for a minute. Look at that, blowing through lights, and away he goes. Where is he? I don't know, but I know that he's going, and he's being chased. And that really is enough for us. Uh, it's 39 minutes past noon there, and this is Corona, California, which is not really Los Angeles, but very close. I'm now told he's a possible shooting suspect. So this could be a little more serious than the routine. Listen here. Residential neighborhood. You hear the chopper pilot. It's going to be a dead-end street. A dead-end street is a problem. I'm hanging a right. Okay. The dead end would have been a negative for the, for the driver of the blue truck and a positive uh, for the police officers. But at this moment, we're sort of sitting in limbo. And uh, all I really know at this point is that he is a possible shooting suspect. And he was on the freeway. We watched during the commercial break. We just got our first pictures of this about just as the commercial began. And he was hightailing it down the freeway. And at first, it looked like he was going as speed as the rest of the traffic, uh, which it looked, you know, speed limited. Whoa. And then all of a sudden just took off like a bat out of Hades and went really fast and took an off ramp there. And he's been taking some chances. You heard the chopper pilot go, whoa, there, because he took a real chance when he cut in front of that vehicle. Uh, he didn't have the right of way. And that, clearly that vehicle didn't know there was a car chase going on. Or, you know, so this, this, this is the scene now at 20 to, 20 to 1 in, in, in Southern California as the truck is just going around in circles. Now, th th it, he was on the 15 freeway south of Corona. And now he's taken, uh, this is west of Los Angeles, and is on the surface streets in a sort of a mixed-use, once residential and now mixed-use neighborhood. And he's been swerving, and if he's wanted in connection with a shooting, as police now tell us they Sounds suspect. Like southbound Penrose, Penrose. Penrose, southbound on Penrose. If he is wanted for a shooting, uh, and he knows he's committed a shooting, he, he could run for a while. A southbound uh, Palomar. So what, they're, what the, the man in the chopper there is doing is letting us know the directions in which he's traveling. So often, people who are caught up in car chases go to areas that they know. And if you listen to Trace Gallagher talk about uh, Southern California and, and, and uh, work these things, they, they end up in neighborhoods that they know, otherwise they get caught. Sometimes they end up right around their house. Often they try to get uh, relatives of the person behind the wheel on the phone to talk them down out of this. And certainly they'll be working to get his cell phone number uh, to try to bring this thing to a safe conclusion. That turned everything off. The problem is uh, they, they can't know if he's armed. As far as we know, they can't and know. And that's coming line. up to a, let's, let's listen to the choppers. He comes up to this interchange here. He hasn't been one to obey a lot of traffic laws. And I say he. Uh, police say they believe he is a shooting suspect. So it's a man behind the wheel, almost always with these things. But occasionally it's not. I remember one recently, a crazy woman behind the wheel, waving out the window. Uh, but the, I copy that. But this one appears to just be taking his leisurely time now as he's on, as he's on the surface streets. The problem is he's had a propensity to cut in front of people. Um, Jonathan Hunt's watching this along with us. Jonathan, we don't know much more than that he is a wanted in a possible shooting, right? Yeah, that's about all we know right now, Shep. It's been going on a little while now. Corona, by the way, uh, is sort of east and slightly south oh, of downtown of LA. LA. Okay. The 15, obviously, uh, that he was on heads directly south down towards the uh, San Diego area uh, in Southern California, but he's obviously come off there. And as you were saying, he may well have headed to an area he knows well. That is so often uh, what these people do in these situations. But that's about all we know right now is that he he is in the corona area as i say east and slightly south of la sort of directly east of anaheim for anybody who knows that sort of a part of southern california uh, and the cops doing their usual thing here just keeping a safe distance he's been hitting some very high speeds at least we saw that when he was on the freeway and still going along at a fair lick there as you can see him blowing through what looked like a red light there chef yeah, I've been watching for pedestrians. He ran a red light at Bear Creek. He ran a red light at Bear Creek. He's, he's wanting to do that. The list of charges, or potential charges, can, is piling up here. And don't even think that they don't keep a list of them because they'll get him on as many things as they can, or that's, that's been SOP uh, from watching these things over the years. One thing you do notice about car chases is they never end well for the guy being chased. Sometimes it goes badly for others as well, and, that, and that's always the fear that somebody's going to get seriously hurt uh, somebody who just didn't get just all of a sudden there this thing is in front of them. But I, I don't remember one ever where the guy got away. There was one maybe a few months ago where the suspect escaped into a mall or some sort of shopping facility and got away for a short time. But because of the car and the license plate and all that, they knew who he was. And 
they eventually got him. So they, people don't get away from this. All they're doing is extending their time uh, in something related to freedom. Uh, as he drives, he'll eventually run out of gas or hit something, or the cops Apparently will. 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour is a little fast for there. They'll put a spike stick strip in front of him. You know that the police are working on a way to get in front of him and stop the progress here. Uh, he appears to be on a. I, this looks like a hilly road. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the terrain in this area, Jonathan. I don't know if you are. Not Corona, okay, copy that. Yeah, not corona exactly, uh, right Shep, but he's obviously headed out of that residential time, area. Um, but what, to pick up on what you were saying, you know, the, the California uh, uh, police departments and sheriff's departments and the CHP, nobody is better at dealing with these kind of chases. Nobody has more experience uh, than these guys, so they know exactly what they're doing in following him now, as you say. They'll be looking ahead, seeing, uh, seeing if there are any points, possible points, where they could put out the spike strips and slow him that way. Uh, but Obviously, they will get him in the end. It's always, as you said, in these cases, simply a matter of time. Well, uh, we're al alone with this thing, and, and, and you just wonder what it is that the man has in mind. I've noticed, Jonathan, that the vehicle is tending to swerve a little bit here and there. I don't know if it just does, if, this, if, the, if there's a problem with his stability, if he's got a suspension problem or something, but the car's doing weird things. Yeah, it doesn't look as though he's got, it doesn't look as though he's popped a tire at all when you see it no, up it close looks, there. I, I wonder um, if it was suspension. Yeah, I, I mean, there could be something wrong with it, obviously, but it's hard to tell from the pictures we're seeing. But, you know, he's going along pretty yeah, well think, uh, right now. On their way. Quarter to one in the Los Angeles area, and uh, this is Corona, California, and a man in a blue truck does not want to be stopped by police, but he will be. It's just a matter of time. He will be stopped. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they're talking to the station there from KABC up in the chopper. Uh, our good friends at ABC, Eyewitness, ABC 7 Eyewitness News there uh, for Los Angeles, and we always appreciate their help in covering, covering stories of great importance and of this one, uh, less importance. But what I'm always curious about is, is what the guy is going to do and how it's going to end. I, I like to watch these things because you just, you just never know what's going to happen. And there's always that fear that something's just going to go horribly wrong. Uh, and we can just hope that doesn't. Maybe he doesn't have a lot of gas. Uh, Jonathan, uh, it looks to me like he's heading out into the hinterlands. Yeah, he obviously heading into an area now where, there would, thankfully, uh, there are a lot less pedestrians around, obviously, um, and he's gone well away from the residential areas, it appears. Where he thinks he's going, I mean, there are, there's Lake Matthews is around there, I know, which is a sort of a, a wilderness kind of area, but uh, where he's headed, it's impossible to tell exactly, but he seems to know where he's going so one can assume as is as we were saying as is often the case here that this is the area in which he is from in which he perhaps resides uh but he seems to know where he's going um cops just following him and hoping that eventually as you say he's either going to run out of gas or they can get some spike strips out Shep. yeah I, I know that the the highway patrol the california highway patrol chips are getting involved in this and you you got to figure they'll, they'll figure out a way to get up in front of him uh, and, and then it's just a matter of making him stop. I'm very curious. Sometimes they zoom in really close. Uh, some of the choppers zoom in closer than others, and I know we're, we're probably getting a couple more of them up there. As we have a number of affiliated stations in Los Angeles. But I'm going to be very interested to see what this guy looks like and try to get a read on what's in that vehicle. Uh, when the chopper gets an opportunity, I'm sure it'll go in real close and, and let us know when it can. But, I mean, if the man's armed, we don't know if he is, but he's, wanted, he's a shooting suspect, according to police, and he's wanted in connection with a shooting. Uh, and, and you can just hope that he's not armed up in there and willing to do something stupid, Jonathan. Yeah, and if, if he is a shooting suspect, they will be exercising a huge amount of caution uh, as they follow him. And indeed, if and when he stops, they will be very, very careful. Uh, they have very strict procedures on how they do all of this, Shep. And if, uh, if there is any possibility whatsoever uh, that this person has a weapon on them, uh, then they will be very, very cautious indeed as they approach him uh, when the time comes, which it inevitably will. You know, this thing started in Riverside uh, uh, on Indiana Avenue, I'm getting from, from Don Fair and uh, Claudia Cowan out in the Los Angeles Bureau, Jonathan. Uh, they're, a robbery and shooting sp suspect. Uh, so I guess he, he robbed a play. I don't know if that was one incident or two. Don Fair is telling me, uh, our deputy bureau chief out in Los Angeles, uh, that he is a robbery shooting. One incident, it was a robbery. There was a shooting that happened during that robbery. And he's in a GMC Sonoma truck now. Uh, traveling in the out in the uh, outback there, uh, not really sure if if this robbery and shooting happened today or if it was something that happened earlier at another time. But if it happened today, I'm sure there's great concern, Jonathan, that there might be a weapon in that car. And if so, 
uh, police will be will be acting be with the greatest of care. Yeah, absolutely. That changes everything. If there's a weapon involved in this, and they they or they have the suspicion that there is a weapon involved, obviously, the, uh, therefore, they have uh, to take it. They have to be very very careful, yes. not just for their own safety as the cops, but for anybody who might get caught yeah, up in this uh, when it comes here. to an end ship. This it ch absolutely changes yeah, everything like if there is a weapon side. in that vehicle right yeah. now. And this construction zone had the potential to cause some problems there. You figure their workers out. Up. Passing Avocado Mesa, Jay. Avocado, Avocado Mesa. Mesa. Some nice names out there. I think it's Via Volcano, or it sounded like. Via Volcano. Well, there you go. Uh, I don't know much about these places, but William Longinesh, you know, is out so here doing our, down. our tax calculator series, and he's going to come in to let us know more about this area. Uh, this GMC Avocado Sonoma Avocado. truck appears okay. to be coming to a stop, or it's certainly it's certainly slowing way down. I'm not sure. It just it looks like it almost, but I don't know. So he slowed down considerably, as you can see, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure uh, exactly what's going on here. Maybe he's given up the ghost. Well, the cops have gotten into position here. The man is getting so out of the vehicle, up. and you can hope he's just giving it up. I mean, that's the hope, and he is. He's about to lie down in the road uh, and spread his legs and put his ha hands yeah, down by his side. And that's going to be the end of this thing. Uh-oh, hello, another person. Oh, is it a lady friend? Got a, no, her. nope, guy. She's out on the ground. No, that, that, that could be a lady friend there. The, 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 the chopper says that's a lady friend. They're both down on the ground. It's not going to be a good day. I mean, it, the, the, the little ride around might have been fun. And can't you just envision this woman? Well, Pull this down. truck over right now, you crazy fool. Can't you hear her? She, she probably gave it to him worse than, worse than the cops will. You know, like, what have you gotten me into now? Unless, of course, she was involved in all the other stuff of which he suspected, though I, I don't have any way to know. Uh, we'll know soon enough. I guarantee you that by Fox Report tonight, we'll, we will have done everything humanly. Oh, look at that. Everything humanly possible to find out. Watch them put their hands up in the air. They've got instructions, but boom, oh, there you go, breaststroke. I guess that was actually uh, wasn't a breaststroke. At any rate, we'll try to find out what happened by 7 o'clock tonight, uh, 4 o'clock Pacific time when the Fox report comes on with all the news of the day, and we'll find out about that. In the next hour, Neil Cavuto is going to be live uh, from the Tea Party uh, convention rally thing in Washington where they're complaining about taxes, and uh, he'll have coverage of that for you there. And uh, I'm guessing now the cops are going to come over and help them a little bit. There we go. Time to put some cuffs on this man, and apparently his uh, female friend uh, appears to be female friend at any rate, the car chase.